So you're saying that the depth you want for your hole is the depth of that? Of that the depth of this uh, mark is the, 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 of the size of the back there. Gotcha. If you go more, more than that, you know, the soil is going to be very soft. When you irrigate, the, the tree is going to go down. <clears throat> so we want to make sure that, that we don't dig more than what we need. <laughs> yes. Very simple soil. Yeah. <laughs> so on a slope like this, <coughs> would you terrace or are you okay on a slope? Uh, you okay? The, <coughs> the one I'm gonna measure is what's gonna be this the, the, the high side here. Okay, high side. So I don't go too deep. The hole has to be at least double of the diameter of the back. So we can solve, you know, especially when you have very heavy soils, you have to solve the, 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 the soil around them. Mm -hmm. So the tree is going to be very, very happy. Now, and then we're going to pack around. So you see the process. And I go, I'm going to go like twice wider than the back. And Sam, maybe in the meantime, Whenever we have a clonal tree, the clonal tree is different to a seedling tree in the sense that it has the clonal roots like all over this area. So whenever you hold the tree from the neck, you are breaking some of those clonal roots that yeah. are up here. So that's why it's very important that when they grab the tree, they hold it like this. Mm. And that's how we do it in the nursery, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, that way we keep the root system as healthy as possible. Yeah, we try not to get the tree for the neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's enough. laughs> it wouldn't be root bound at all. I mean, you don't you don't break the roots loose when you pack off the package. So what we do, so they don't start like growing in circles. That's why one of the reasons why we use these leaves. Mm -hmm. Another reason is because it's also easier to leach and not kill the tree by uh, drowning it. And because it allows us to make mistakes in overwatering, mm -hmm. because there's like good drainage. Mm -hmm. To cut the plastic, we use one of these knives. Mm -hmm. So try not to cut the roots when you cut the your plastic. We use do this and. Uh, So apologies for all the basic questions I'm bringing. No, 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 go ahead. That's okay. What size, what term is for this plant is the size? What term is this? Is this like a gallon, a age? How do you refer to this? We so call them three gallons. Three gallons. Yes. Three gallons. Gallon. yes. Okay. Three gallons. Three gallons. So you won't <coughs> break up the roots on the side of that. You'll put it in a hole just like that? Just like that. We don't think so. So, I hope I, I made it the hole just right. No, we don't <coughs> break them. So, no. how the, we don't break them, we don't alter anything in the root system. We just plant them like that. Right. You have to water right away? Definitely, you have to water right away. Um, and what I recommend is water the, the ground like day before so the tree don't have to be on the dry soil when you plant it. And even it's so hard to, in some places. So you water day before, and then you go out right after you plant it, you, you have to water them again. So keep the stress out of the tree, that's the main thing. A lot of people like putting amendments on the hole. We don't do anything. They, it works for us not having to put anything. So uh, that's the way we do it. We also try to plant a little bit higher than the soil surface because when you start irrigating, it usually compacts a little bit, so it goes down. It's very, very, very important that the um, surface of the um, substrate, of the nursery substrate, it's at the same level at the end after the irrigation, it ends up at the same level as the soil in your farm. Because we've seen uh, in many areas that they planted, for example, too shallow, and you can see all the clonal roots exposed. And of course, that's terrible for the tree yeah. that it's gonna die. And we've also seen that when it's buried too deep, 
it can also you're putting the stem under the water uh, so under the soil so it's dark conditions humidity with the irrigation so that also uh, facilitates the growth of fungal diseases like phytophthora citricola on the stem of the avocado yes <coughs> so i make the hole you know <coughs> like twice bigger than the than the size of the bag so i have enough space to 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 uh pack or around very carefully not hurting the roots at all sam at what po we also use a big like a stakes to hold the trees in the right position at the beginning when do you put the stake right away so we just plant you know and um, why wash the tree just in mm -hmm. case any to prevent any sunburn mm -hmm. we will wash them we stake them next day but, you know in, in uh, especially when it's uh, windy areas or, or before the root start growing out so when you put a stake it's uh, better just just plant it and put the stake better than come later and then you want to put some uh, break some roots you wait a couple weeks to do the stake roots is going to start going out so it's very dangerous to stack after two or three weeks. Mm. And the stake cannot be, of course, on top of the substrate of the nursery because then you will be harming some roots. Uh, we are big fans of uh, planting on berms. We think the drainage is better, especially with the high rains that we've been getting. So, and it makes the soil more uh, uniform. So that's why we're always recommending people that plant on berms. It's going to be an insurance, it's expensive, but it will pay off. Can you describe planting on berm a little bit more? It's the same concept because our berms, you have to make them at least how many how, how many feet wide, Three. Sam? Uh, the size of the canopy? Yes, uh, depends on, on your soil. You, know, you have a very clay soil. We recommend it to grow at least three feet high by three wide, at least. It's a big berm. If you have, uh, especially in places when we just replant, remove old trees mm -hmm. in the style over, mm -hmm. it's better, you know, so we can have a good range. Yeah. And the tree never going to be over water for phytophthora problems. I know some people you guys should teach that too. And in terms of irrigation, if we are irrigating with drippers, it's very important that the dripper or the drip actually ends up right here on the nursery substrate because yes. there is a difference between the, sub the nursery substrate and the soil in the farm. So sometimes the water struggle moving in or out of that uh, different texture. So that's why at the beginning, it's very, very, very important to put the drip right on right. the substrate so that way you're sure that roots are getting water what about mulch on top if you have available mulch that'll be the best thing you can do okay the mulch should never touch the surface the stem you yes. have you also you need need, always need to put it a little yeah. bit away and how many how far away from the stem i would say yeah six inches four six, inches six inches to eight inches uh, uh from the from the trunk and it's scary sometimes when you put mulch because a lot of people tend to overwater. yeah so you have to be very 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 careful yep thank you very much yeah. that's super helpful mulch i believe is the best thing you can do with your trees save a lot yeah and the tree love it These trees were completely all bloom. I'm surprised because they were they, they had some of the growth, and I came back and they were all just blooming. No, no, there were no leaves. Yeah. And I was gone for a week, and I came before I, I, I before I left, and there was I was surprised at how much they had covered up. But they were it was all bloom, all just just white bloom, and and, and then. Uh, During the bloom period, the ideal weather would be 70, 75, something like that. 
and so we you know we, we've been having 60 65 in the morning and it doesn't you know warm up two years ago was worse and this year I said hopefully it'll be okay hopefully it'll be okay because we did get some sun sometimes in the afternoon but I guess it wasn't it wasn't enough to do the set and we've had a couple of bad set years uh, we uh, last year because of the of the cool this year I think will be okay on most of it uh, and then the uh, but the last year we hardly had any fruit where we have some trees that were you know three years old they should have said and, and uh, four at the other place and they should have said you know more fruit and we hardly had any fruit we're going to yeah we, we haven't started to but we're going to start doing it yeah we've got uh, about three thousand ordered that we're going to enter plant now and see how you know how that helps the only issue that i have with the pollinators is that sometimes their bloom period doesn't match when when the, the avocados are, 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 are blooming. Another gentleman asked if we had done the Sutano pollen, which you can spray. We haven't done it on the gems, but we've done it on, the, on some has. And, uh, and, and it seems like we have some, some good results. So we just have to walk, get a, a match of pollinators. So we're gonna try different pollinators, hopefully find one that works the best for the, for the gem. But it has to bloom at the same period, or fairly, you know, otherwise it's, you know, it, it doesn't help you. One of the things that I've noticed on the gems also, because they want to be so productive, is that we were doing it, we, we, not at the beginning, but we're doing about twice or three times the nutrition that we do on, on normal has trees. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that we have increased it to double at least, you know. As you, we use the triple 15 and the, a, a dry application in the spring, like February, March. Mm -hmm. yes. And then we'll do like A, a and C, which is a calcium, you know, calcium nitrogen blend and so. Is so, that through the irrigation? Yeah, then? and then we walk, we do that about six, seven months out of the year. We, we split the monthly application and we do it every two weeks. We do it every two weeks. And I think, I think that's beneficial, like the spoon feeding. You know, yeah. Do you use any Fosgard? Phosphorus acid to pre prevent root rot. We 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 we're going to start using it on a regular basis. We used to use it all the time, and we're using the uh, the uh, the Aranus. Aranus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're doing that twice twice a week. Yeah. But, but, but it regular. works. Yeah, we use the it regular. Yeah, in June and, and then in September. Right now we're letting them kind of just be for a little bit, and then. As they get to probably about this age, we'll start doing a little bit more of the internal cleaning. And I know that they are susceptible to bruising, you know, they say, and I've seen it up north where even a branch, I mean, a leaf will, will rub, rub in and it'll, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll scratch the fruit. Because they are an internal setter, so we don't normally do the same thing on the gems as we would do on the has, we would skirt the has a little bit more because they, they won't produce inside like that, like the gem. So we, we're, we're, we're going a little bit slower on the skirts, but we are opening them up for, for you know, like for irrigation purposes, for water distribution. Hmm. And then, and this, like, like your question, once they get to this age, we will start doing a little bit more of the internal cleaning. But we're not, we're going to, you know, not do as much, but we do do more than than, than Broca says, you know, we should do just a little bit more. And, we'll just help, help and the really successful gem growers up in uh, the Ventura, Santa Barbara, Carpinteria area, they've started to do the same thing. They're saying, they're finding that um, the benefits outweigh the drawbacks because they're, you get a lot of fruit on the ground, mm -hmm. especially in the first few years. And if you don't prune, that fruit has a tendency to rot and it becomes second tier uh, of coal. It's just not very good quality fruit. So Jaime's been very active in making sure that they're pruned and pruned at the right time. Any time, you know, sometimes when the fruit's around, it's hard to do it, but once the harvest is gone, so if you're done in May, June, that you don't have to wait for the cool weather. The, Internal pruning can be done at any time of the year after the harvest. So, in the, in the tops, we normally do it in the in the fall, like after after the heat subsides, so that you don't get any tip burn and, and, and I mean uh, any burn on the trees from taking up some of the their, their shade. One of the things that we figured out that you can do 
20 hours a week and if you put them all at once you're not going to get the benefit you have to split it in two because of the shallow roots of the avocados or three times and, and you don't have to increase the hours of water you just have to increase the frequency that you do it at and that's that's real important because you can save a lot of money on that and but you can put 20 hours on monday and by monday the next week it'll be wilted and if you put 10 hours and 10 hours it, it'll, it won't show that and you're still putting on the same amount of water on the tree I've seen, I've seen them at small, you know, like Fraser Farms only has two markets and they had beautiful hats and they, they were from Mexico. <clears throat> they, were, they were like 28s or 32s and then they, they, they were $2 each and then I walked around because they had them identified as California avocados but they were from Mexico. So I talked to the produce manager and told them nice. and they changed the placards, the little placards. <laughs> they, they normally sell California. <clears throat> but then I, I, I went around to the other end they had a display of gems and it was you know three feet four feet wide and it only had a little bit on the bottom left and those were 250 each and, and so i go back to the, the same gentleman that i had talked to and, and i said oh, i see you carry the gem and he says oh yeah we got about three or four pallets and, and we can't keep them on the floor that's all we have left so the consumer is willing to pay more than and the hats were beautiful they weren't like little hats they were big hats and, and they, they were willing to pay 250 for the gem and $2, you know, for the hats, and they, they paid the 250 and they said, we can't keep them on the floor. Right.